Thank you guys so much for uh, clicking on the video. And today's video, I am going to be uh, showing you how to, or how I made a uh, small leather pocket organizer, uh, EDC organizer. Um, and so I intentionally intended on doing the entire video in one shot. I'm going to have to do it in, uh, in, in a two part. Just, it's just too long. And I'm, I tried to edit it down and speed things up as much as possible, but, um, you know, in order for me to do the video the way that I want to do it, it's going to have to be a two parter. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can get the second part. The second part should be shorter than the first part, but it's going to be, you know, pretty lengthy. You'll see. So thanks for checking it out and let's go. How's it going, guys? I am going to be working on a project today. Um, I have some scraps left over, uh, decent sized scraps that I can't use uh, from making my leather wallets that I will be listing soon, hopefully. Um, I need to make a leather... EDC pocket organizer for a couple items like my can you see these okay um lumen top uh flashlights my backup flashlight I use my Rovi Vaughn uh A1 I believe it's the A1 yeah um as my regular EDC flashlight and so I am looking to uh, get something so that this is not turning essentially turning sideways in my pocket because then it kind of pokes into the the lining of the pocket and kind of wears through the pockets in a uh, quicker fashion. So I'm looking to get this, maybe room for a knife. Um, maybe like my, this is my favorite knife that I have actually right now. Well, not my favorite knife. It's my favorite EDC pocket knife uh, that I have right now. Uh, it's the Sog Terminus and the G10 handle scales are uh, nice and worn down, uh, kind of satiny and smooth. And I lost this actually for a couple of weeks uh, or actually a couple months, uh, not a couple weeks, a couple months, and it found its way back to me. So I was very happy when that happened. So ultimately I'm just looking to make something simple and crude, not well, not crude. I mean, something that I want to carry every day. Uh, so for this portion here, I just need a back piece and then I can, I think I'm going to try and wet form the, uh, the top piece on. I don't know if that will, f you know, that's not gonna be big enough, but I think I can get a piece out of there and transfer it over and maybe get just out of there. I wanna utilize the scrap as much as possible, you know, it's uh, other, other than stuff like this, it's not really useful for anything. So uh, I am going to go ahead and grab a, what am I gonna grab? Uh, paper and a pencil and I will be right back. That's leather dye, by the way, in case you're wondering. Not uh, not any schmutz. Hold on. Okay, so in the couple minutes that I ran to go get something to uh, sketch this out on, I have come to the conclusion that I want to do something a little bit different. Uh, so what I was originally going to do was just a pretty much a two-fold or two-piece of leather you know, style thing here. Can you see that? Is that no, I'll do it a little bit darker? Um, you know, pretty, pretty simple with like a, one of these guys here, stitch seam down here, stitch seam around here. Um, and that is still what I'm going to do. But if I'm looking at this from the side, and I just want to make sure you guys go, okay, you can see that. Um, if I'm looking at it from the side, or I guess from the back, looking at it from the back, um, what I want to be able to have here on the back is imagine that this side here is this side here and it's just kind of flipped over on itself maybe like a small little pocket on the back here with a snap um just so i can throw some stuff in here i ended up losing i had a uh a really nice uh edc pouch uh from i think it's alpaca alpaca gear or alpaca pouches or something to that effect llama pouches i can't exactly remember what it was it was a really nice green uh zip up one with i had my titanium pry bar in it and i had uh, uh my uh, rat d2 in there rat 2 d2 uh in there and a bunch of edc i don't know what the heck happened to it uh i looked everywhere and i can't find it 
it, I just, one day I reached for it and I needed it and it wasn't there and I started back tracing to the last place that I know I used it and I couldn't find it. I'm sure that a lot of you guys out there have had that happen. Same thing that happened with this knife here. Um, but this one found it back to me and I've got hopes that the other one's gonna find it back to me. So what I'm going to do, what I think I need to do, because I want to form all of this flap, the back, and this piece here out of one piece. So I think that if I, like if this is the flap here, um, I guess I would need to do that like that and then apply a piece onto here that has the ability to hold these pockets here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I can store a little bit of stuff in there, maybe a little bit of backup cash, maybe a little bit of... Uh, I have some Kevlar rope that I really like to keep on me that's got like 150, 200 pound uh, weight rating on it. Just a little something like that, a couple of uh, safety pins, little enough to just keep on you at all times, no matter what. So I think that's, so I need a piece that's going to fit that whole piece there. And then this piece here, I can probably source from something like this. Um, so I'm just going to take a couple of quick measurements. I'm not gonna make you guys watch me while I figure that out, just cause I'm gonna have to do a little bit of figuring. And I'll come back when I figure out which piece I'm gonna use to make this out of, and then we'll go from there with the cutting, planning, and all that kind of stuff. All right, so. I'm just gonna have to, I'm gonna have to scrap the scrap idea here um, because obviously if I am doing this idea with putting a pouch on the back, I'm gonna need more than just a simple square to do it out of. I'm gonna need to have the wraparound length of it. So, and that's not gonna, yeah, that's not gonna work for that. So, um, the original thing I sketched out here was this, uh, which comfortably puts them both on there in the, uh, with enough room to be able to stitch in between and wet form in between. It feels large in the pocket, where's me? Uh, that is about 110 millimeters by around 130, which I don't know why I'm using centimeters or millimeters. I do live in America and I never have done that before. before. Uh, it would be, and again, forgive me, this is a really old uh, square that I have here. I just use for a straight edge sometimes. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be about four inches by about five inch, but four by five. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Just make sure I'm recording. Okay, good. Um, so... So this is what we're gonna use, this piece of leather here. Let me just make sure that we got a good straight edge here. Okay, All right, yeah, we got a good straight edge on that side. So, let me see here, we got 100, eh, you know what, we can probably get away with 105. So that's what I'm gonna do. You never know when you might need that extra five millimeters, you know? Or maybe you don't. Comment down below whether or not you know. Oh, look at this nice little square here I got. This is what I could use for this. Make sure I got it lined up properly. So we're gonna do about four by five. This I think it's a machine, uh, mach, uh, machinist's uh, square. So I'll just drop that there. And you know, we'll drop one in between too so we have a Way to connect these lines up a little bit nicer. Uh, sorry if I'm not talking. Should I put music on? I don't know. Do you guys like listening to music in the background of videos? I feel like I usually don't like that. Just because it's kind of hard to hear. Um, but a lot of times they don't do it because their channel's monetized. Um, and my channel is not monetized. If you guys uh, would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that uh, I am able to at some point be monetized, that would be appreciated. My son, who is very interested in my leather uh, leather company, is uh, and also very interested in YouTube, is very, very, very much interested in uh, you know the ch the channel becoming monetized. So. Um, 
not that that's something that you guys care about, obviously. But not, honestly, not something that I care about either because it's, uh, you know, I just like making leather stuff. I'm trying to share some of my designs with you guys. Uh, and if anybody wants to buy this stuff, this I don't plan on selling. This is just something personally for me. Uh, but if it turns out nice, maybe I maybe I will sell it. But uh, so one thirty times two. So we'll make a mark here. Make a mark there. Um, we also have to have the flap over the top. Good gracious. Uh, oh, what did I make this line to? We'll make that uh, 35. So I don't know how long this is. We got 150, around 300 millimeters long or whatever that would be in inches. Maybe I'll put it on the screen. Maybe I won't. Um, I am going to, at the end of this, once I have everything uh, all stitched up, I will be sanding off the edges. So I'm not uber worried about uh, making sure that this specific uh, cut line is perfectly, literally razor, you know, razor straight or ruler straight or whatever, just because I know that I will be uh, sanding that edge down when I'm done. So. Anyway, uh, ba, 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 ba. are you guys still able to see that there? Okay, now you are. The only reason I'm not measuring up on both sides is just because the other side, the cut seam there, is not perfectly straight so the, you know it's uneven on that side so that wouldn't do me any good to measure up so I got to rely on the straightness of this plus I'm going to be cutting this at a, a V notch anyway so it doesn't really matter all right got new cool pieces of uh Ooh, wait wait so okay yeah I can, I can still keep the maybe I should put uh put this uh that could work you know I'll work on top of it and then I don't know I can't imagine anybody wants to reference it but if you do, I just want to make sure that I was keeping my my seam side in. So that that's essentially what it's going to be like there. And I will cut this kind of at a, you know, 45 to make that V trial. And then I'll have a little pouch inside. And then I'll attach the stuff out here, here. And then we'll see. Maybe it'll be too bulky. I don't know. Uh, that's why you make stuff for fun and, you know. I'll find a use for it, you know, if I have to put a belt loop on the stupid thing, I, I will, and then I'll be able to carry it on my belt when I'm hiking or something to make a fire kit out of it, but, um, all right. Am I rambling a lot? I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling. All right, so let's put an angle on this side over here. Let's say, what angle do we want to do here? Well, I gotta get a halfway mark here so that I know where to. So we're right at four, now just over four inches. So I'll make it two and just a, a scotch over there. Let me get as much length out of that as possible. So I'm just going to essentially put it here and see what kind of looks right. And we'll sketch it on real quick. That looks about right. And that's about, you know, we're just going to set it at 60 and call it good. I should probably put some music on. <laughs> My big head's probably right in the way, isn't it? Oh no. What am I gonna do? No, should I just reset it on the other side? I guess so. How does that work? I guess, well, no, that doesn't work. No, the numbers are on both sides. Is that right? No, that can't be right. This is why you should pay attention in school, children. 
you don't want to know. Instead of screwing around with trying to figure that out. Look, it, there's there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? I'm just going to make a mark over here on where this guy comes from there. And then connect it on my straight line or my center line there. You know, you don't got to do it. You can use multiple tools to get stuff done, you know? And also, it's just for me, so it ain't for customers. That should be real close, right? So, this is gonna be a, this might be a long video. I'm gonna probably have to, I don't know. Probably gonna have to, you know, I'm just gonna, I am gonna use a straight line, because this is a finished edge here. So I'll just mark it down a little bit on the other side and be close enough. Again, I wouldn't use I wouldn't use these techniques while working on stuff that I'm selling people, but for a thing that I'm just figuring out myself uh, for my own personal use, whatever. Nobody's going to be coming up to my EDC pocket pouch with a protractor and making sure that my angles are exactly correct. Let's play a little music. That might be nice. It'll at least be nice for me. Ba -da 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 -da. I don't know if you guys like Tyler Childers, but whenever I'm working in my shop here, I like to play a little bit, and it's quite nice. I don't know if that's too much for you guys. I'll probably stop here at some point and check it, and if it is... Then maybe I'll over maybe I'll overdub the whole video. Who knows? All right, so that's probably pretty decent, just like that, because this one's a little bit longer. Yeah, and of course these are going to be on the other side of this. This would be like this. And then on this side is where I would be mounting this stuff, which that looks pretty good there. Yeah, so I, I carry, I don't know if uh, I mentioned at the beginning, I carry two flashlights on me. I'm a, a home inspector for, uh, and I go into vacant houses a lot for mortgage companies. Yeah, that looks good there. That would be good. Uh, I go into vacant houses a lot, so sometimes I'm in the basement. I don't know if you any of you guys have used the Rovi Vons, um, but they the battery for me, in my experience anyway, has run out without letting me know that it's running out, and so that's not ideal. Um, you know, I'd like to have like like the I don't know if any of you guys have ever carried the the Lumen Top, but it's it's. Honestly, a pretty nice flashlight, and for I think it's a double A light. Yeah, double A. Um, it, it it runs for a long time, and it'll keep bumping down in its brightest mode that it'll allow you to use uh, for quite a while. I mean, you you're gonna know when that battery is about to die. With the with the Rovi Vaughn, it's like, you know, it's super super bright and super nice, but it, it runs out way too quick. Um, or, well, yeah, yeah. You know what? Honestly, it runs out too quick for somebody that doesn't charge their flash li flashlight all the time. And um, anyway, this isn't this isn't important to the project. I have ADD in case you guys were uh, not picking up on that. So looks like we got a good with that. So uh, let's go ahead and what do I want to do here? I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this down and then weight it down. Uh, take another piece of uh, plywood, oops, uh, like this, and then put like my vice, my uh, my uh, really big bench vice on top of it and get it nice and flat because like when you, like with my wallets that I make, um, when you get it, when you weigh it down, it, like you get a really nice tight seam on it and it's a lot, a lot nicer to work with as far as like stitching seams and stuff like that. And I think that that's what I'm going to do. And also I want to figure out whether or not I want to scale up these edges a little bit so it's a little bit more pocket friendly. So I'm going to stop it at this point, figure that out as far as the scaling of the edges on the bottom and wet it down a little bit. You know what? I'll do that on camera. So hold on one second. Okay. 
So, uh, so I decided that I am going to probably scale up those edges, but I don't need to do that right now. That's something that I can do after I get it all flattened out and let it rest uh, so that it gets nice and flat like uh, leather can get when you get it wet. And, you know, right now it's obviously very bulky, but we can get it much thinner. Um, so we're going to wet it down. You're just going to use a spritz bottle, 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 a spritz bottle, and, uh, you know, nice amount of water in the seam area. You don't gotta do the whole thing, just the area that is going to be folded. I'm gonna do both sides just for good measure. And then I am going to give it its final fold essentially to form where it's going to be. Before I do that, I do wanna just reconfirm that the, yeah. I'm gonna have it come about there. And we'll move it up a little bit. Move it up just a scotch. Just a scotch or two. Uh, use a, one of these bad boys just to kind of set the seam. And again. You guys like listening to music when you're working in your shop? I do. It kind of makes me feel a little bit more creative. Um, okay, so what I like to use is I have these bags that I use. Uh, I used to make uh, camping chairs, uh, ultralight camping chairs, and I would ship them out in these, but they're a little bit bigger than what I need for what I'm selling nowadays, so uh, I just use those as a nice way of keeping you know, the impression of the wood essentially from getting, oops, what is inside there? Or under there, oh, flashlight. So I am going to, uh, let me just take a quick measure on that before I do. It was one, uh, well, it ended up being about 103. Uh, just cause I need to know, cause I'm going to now move on after I finish this to working. It's nice to have a couple of pieces, you know, scrap pieces of plywood around. And I will just set that there. There's probably better ways of doing this, but again, this is not for a customer. This is just for myself. And, oh, jeekers. Look at that bad boy. That's not going to show up well on camera, but it is heavy. So, I'm going to take this over here. And set her down. And let that press for a little while. And now I'm going to uh, we'll I don't know if you guys keep square squares of spare squares of plywood around, but I like to. Uh, more room this way. You know what? They make a great bench surface that you can beat up and abuse without actually ruining your bench. And I've got some leather down right now just because I was recording some shorts and some uh, TikToks for leather wall it's going to be selling but um all right so i'm going to do a little bit of wet forming i'm going to try to anyway i've never well that's not true exactly i've done it for knives before like uh, uh right here. i have this is like one of my first knives that i made and i wet formed this and i mean it's still really nice and solid and uh but the problem is when i did this i learned a valuable lesson which is don't make it to the su i use this for uh chicken butchering actually um but uh so that's why it looks like that it's not it's not gross it's just a, car a, a carbon steel that uh takes on stains and stuff like that but 
I made it too loose, so now it just, you know, there's almost no, there's, well, there's literally no retention in there. It's only based on that strap there, so. For this, I'm going to want to not form it completely. I want to form it, like, maybe half the way so that I still get a decent amount of retention out of the, uh, out of the sheath, so. Right. I'm just going to cut this out so that I know about the size that I'm going to be looking for at the end. Is this too chaotic for people to follow along? Probably. But it is free internet content, right? So. All right, so I'll just give you a little bit of a narr over narrative here. Whole lot of talking, whole lot of figuring out going on here, uh, unnecessary to make you guys sit through it. Mostly I was just kind of trying to figure out how I was going to cut it out, looking for a straight edge to go off of there. Again, straight edge wasn't necessary in this situation. You know, normally you're looking for straight edges, but because it's going to be overhanging, you're going to cut it off anyway. It's really not that big of a deal. I was looking for, to, to keep a piece of leather on the other side of this cut, big enough to use uh, for one of my, uh, my wallet uh, patterns. So that was ultimately what was I was looking at there while I was trying to figure out where to make the cut at. I didn't want to leave myself too short of a piece there where I couldn't use that for anything. So I'm just wetting it down, doing a little bit of figure in here, getting the layout going. I'm going to start doing the scalloping layout for the pocket. I probably could have used one of those scrap pieces for this because I was just thinking, you know, it's going to be... Uh, you know, the full side of the back, but it didn't end up being that because you cut it down anyway, but here we go. I'll probably edit some of this out. I don't know. I guess we will see. Okay. So I'll set these about as far apart as I plan on them being which is a little bit closer. Yeah, right around there. I'm gonna need a little more space there. Maybe I could do this because it would give me more lateral. Maybe that's what I intended originally. It's not, but that's what I'm gonna do. because it'll give me more room. And I'm just going to do my best to start stretching that down. And I will use my, I can't ever remember what this thing's called, but you guys know. No, that's not good. I don't wanna, it's got burnishing stuff on it. All right, so uh, we're just doing a little bit more wet forming here. You guys don't need to sit through the full thing. I've already told you how to do it. I ended up actually pushing it a little bit further than I should have. Um, I guess I didn't learn as much from my knife project as I thought I did um, when it comes to not wet forming it too deep so you lose some retention. It's okay. They, they, it, it does retain it. It's just uh, it's a little bit looser than I would prefer. I'd like it to be a little bit snug, but you can tip it upside down and shake it at the end, you know, so it's good enough for that. So let's get back to it here. So here is our piece here that's been underneath. You can already see how much flatter that is there. It looks a little bit, there you go. Um, so I just want to grab this because, I mean, not only is it now flat enough to be able to work with the way that I want to, I want to see how these are going to fit on there, which looks like they're going to fit really nicely. I could even scoot those down a little bit, probably. Yeah, this is not going to go on there square. You know, square wants to be like that, but I don't think the way that I formed it, although I'll have to take a look. I might be able to get away with it being a little bit more square. Uh, but you can see where we're going with this. And then we will come back and cut that out so that it fits evenly on our little pouch there. And then set uh, some buttons on there. Maybe I'll do a little scallop on this, you know, like something like, something like that. Have to see how much room I have to work with. Yeah, I got room to work with there. I could do something like that. You guys able to see that? 
you at least see where my pencil's going. Um, just to give me a little bit easier access to getting into the pocket, just because up that high, I'd have to like really shove my hand down in there, and that's not going to be good. Nobody wants that. Pretty much the only thing that I'm doing here is just uh, kind of sketching out where that scallop's going to be and uh, kind of finalizing that. Going to go ahead and use the button as a marker uh, to kind of lay out where that's going to be, push it in, give it a little indent so I know exactly where I want to uh, knock out the uh, buttonhole from. And then I'm going to use that to push through into the below area in the leather so that I know where to set the snap for the button on it. So I'll go ahead and punch both those out. If you're following along and trying to do this yourself, uh, I should not have set the button first um because i should have waited till the leather was dyed before i did that which you'll hear me say when we come out of this but uh, i do it anyway so here we go you can kind of see there what we're what we're looking at here and this is all oh you know what what the heck am i doing i should be dying that first if you're doing this for the love of God, I hope that you're not following me step by step and pausing it as you go on your first watch through. Um, don't do that first. We need to have uh, we need to have this dyed first. So I'm gonna have to dye heavily on that and then wipe it off and pay attention to it. I was only doing that to I got ahead of myself here. Again, the ADD, the ADD got the best of me. Anyway, you would use. Uh, snaps uh where are they like this you put this through the other end and i'll show you that obviously before i go but these these go in there like that and then yada 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 so on and so forth so what i need to do now is uh create the scale up on there Man, this video is gonna be so long <sighs> all right so i want to make it and i found my little thing that i would lost um Let's give ourselves a couple of, uh, so we're going to just split the difference here on either side of a hundred cause it's so close to a hundred. We're just going to do a hundred, one and 60, 30 and 70, 20 and 80, 10 and 90. And the only reason I'm doing that is just so I can give myself a little reference point here so I can try to gauge is that showing up? I don't know. Not really. There we go. I'm just doing that so that I can get a gauge as best as I could, I can, on where these lines are lining up. Because this is the center line here, and then for each line that goes out from there, I want to have it lining up in the same spot for the scale. I'm not going to use a, you know, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. It's going to be a hidden seam on uh you know something that i'm only making for myself for personal use so um so we'll make this here and i guess we'll do this and i'm just using these points here as reference points this might not be helpful to anybody but i'm just using these points as reference points to make sure that i'm kind of essentially the same point on each line as i go and it gives me a point to measure to on each side to make sure that it's even as i go One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Again, I have ADD. What am I going to do? You know, I'm just going to take this up to just up at a 45 degree angle from there. And see, it's a nice way of getting a close approximation. Again, it's going to be a hidden seam behind there. And you can make up, a, you know. You can cover over a multitude of sins when it comes to, uh, you know, a uh, slightly uneven line when it comes to burnishing at the end. And again, if you're just making it for yourself, which I'm guessing that everybody who's watching this and thinking about making it is making it for themselves. Um, who, who, who cares? You know, not everything in the world has to be perfect. All right. So I'm just going to start here about the middle. And do a real light, a real light uh, first cut here, just because you don't want to go running wild, and then you're stuck with a cut that goes off into no man's land, 
or go slightly off where you want it to and then it's kind of hard when you're cutting leather to get it to you know if you get real close to the line sometimes it wants to just follow the line you cut last time well see what, look what i just did i just did it right there for the love of god you know what we're gonna be beveling these edges anyway so it ain't the end of the world something like that there i'm hoping that that's gonna come into focus uh something like that there i can take that off with a beveler and it'll be fine yeah, right. Speaking of that, I want to get rid of that because it's ugly and driving me crazy. So we're just going to bevel that right now. All yeah, right. What happened? We're going to do both sides because I don't want to look at these ugly edges. You guys like drinking bourbon while you're working? Cause I do. You know, it's it's close enough. Close enough. Good enough. Don't be a perfectionist. Nobody likes a perfectionist. Or do. I don't know. There's probably there's probably a good use for them in the world. But I am not one. I am a you know what? I am a close approximationist. And that seems to work okay for me. Okay. Um I am going to, I'm going to bevel everything now. And I also should have probably held off on beveling this. Um, there's a little disclaimer box that pops up afterwards that kind of explains why that is. Um, I don't have room to say it here, but you can read it now. So I don't want to do the inside of this area here because I'm going to be joining that up there and I want that seam to be tight. And if you took off a 45 degree angle on both sides, it'd be like a little, a little, uh, Okay, show a little V notch on both sides. Uh, and I don't want that. I want it to be a cohesive seam there, so I'm not going to do that. Although I did say I was going to sand these edges, but the edges look really good, so I'm not going to actually have to. So uh, I lied earlier when I said I was going to do it. Watch this video all the way through, would be my advice, uh, so that you don't get misled with strange ideas. Um, so on this side, I can bevel up to this seam here because this seam is not going to have a matching seam on the other side. Oh boy. See, this would be a lot easier if I didn't set a button already. That's probably a quick way to get a beveler stuck in my hand, which wouldn't be ideal. Baptized and holy water and shot. Okay, so that's what that's gonna be like. Let's see how the uh, wet form piece is coming. I stuck it underneath the vice uh, bench vice. Yeah, that looks pretty doggone good. Not completely dry actually. It's probably yeah, that looks even worse on camera. Yeah, it looks pretty bad in real life too. <laughs> um, should I wait on this? My ADD wants me to keep going. Um, should I go? Should I, should I stay or should I go? Is the song. Um, I am going to. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna exercise a little bit of caution, which is rare for me, and I'm gonna wait on this. I'm gonna restrain myself a little bit and I'm going to not try to finish everything in one night like I always do. Uh, but I am going to dye at least this piece so that I don't have to do that tomorrow. Uh, so we can put this back over here for now and not mess with it right this second. And uh, so yeah. You know what I thought I was going to do? I thought I was going to do a seamless cut there. But I didn't account for the fact that the music would be different when I got back. So there goes that idea. 
What a lunatic. All right. So, I'm going to dye this. And then that probably, well, maybe we'll burnish some edges tonight. I don't, I don't know. I've got some free time tonight. That's kind of why I'm trying to get it all done at once. So here we are, we're gonna start the dyeing process. Um, and you just wanna to try to get as best coverage as possible on that. Uh, I mean, there's there's probably a wrong way to do it, but as long as you get everything covered and you're gonna go over it uh, wherever you see light spot spots anyway. So um, do your best to get as good a coverage. The way that I fixed the issue with the button, as you can see there, I just kind of flood the, the dauber with uh, a fair amount of dye and then I just go right up to it and then I wipe it off immediately just so that it gets underneath the edges. With the wet dauber, you can you know kind of spill over underneath where the button's at, kind of fixes the mistake. Ideally, you wouldn't have uh, put the button on first. Cool. What a nice thing this, oh, I forgot to scale up the edges. Again, if you're following along, you should probably watch through entirely first. Uh, can I use this, is that too sharp? That's not too sharp of an angle. I'm just gonna go with that. I don't know if you guys saw that. I'm just using a thing that I have grommets in here, just to, and yeah, you yeah, should be careful because I accidentally, you can see right now, I did put a little impression in, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful on this side. But again, it's only for me, and I would learn that lesson on this go around. Well, I didn't learn it that good because I, I, I just did it again, but whatever for that i'm gonna use my and i'll have to uh re uh re bevel these edges mm, i don't love that we got him i getting myself into one of those classic situations of Putting an extra brush stroke on when I shouldn't. That's a real thing. I also like to paint, uh, do oil painting sometimes. And I can't tell you the number of times, yeah, that's good, whatever. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that I have been pretty god dang content with a painting only to be like, you know what? Maybe I'll add a tree here. I feel like my my artistic expression is speaking to me here. Maybe I'll, you know, just just do a little bit extra here. Uh, and all I'm doing, just so in case uh, I didn't already explain it, I'm just you 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 know, if you're if this is your thing, you just take a, a line off there. And then you rotate it and a line off there and then a line off there and then a line off there. And then you end up with a close enough approximation where you got this. You know, I'm using a straight edge to make curved lines because your brain's not that smart, you know? It's like, oh, close enough. That's curved. And it is close enough. All right, so uh, I am going to rebevel that edge which means I'll have to restain that edge, which is fine. And obviously you short, you stop short of going over here because there's not an edge to bevel there. Um, oh, that's too much dye on there. What a waste. It is a waste when you get too much dye on your dauber, isn't it? That kind of drives me crazy. It really does. You know, I'm just gonna add it onto a couple places where I see some splotches. Here and here. Yeah, there's one. I don't know how it looks on camera, because I can't obviously watch on camera. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's a couple spots here too that needed. Oh, well, right there too, good gracious. Come on, Tommy. Um, 
you know, sometimes on camera things look different than they do in person. It looks good in person as far as the leather dye. Maybe it looks really splotchy on camera, but it does not in person. So, uh, so then I think that's, I could burnish edges, I guess. Yeah, the, the number of edges I can burnish are only from right here, right here over. Oh, look at my hand. See, that's how that happens is, yeah, don't put, and I got gloves. I got gloves right up there. And I just never think to put them on because I just get too impetuous. And I assure you, you're not missing anything here, guys. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go back and figure it out, but it wasn't important. So what I can do is I can set, I want to get as much of this done tonight as I can, just because I'll be happier when I go to bed tonight if I do. And I'll have less to do tomorrow when I don't have free time as readily available. Uh, nope, that's the same one. Oh, there's one. I always have a hard time finding these little guys. I don't know if this is on camera. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out just a scotch. I'm using just a tapered piece here. For whatever reason, this stem on this piece is just a little bit bigger than the stem on the uh, button piece. And so I'm just going to use a tapered piece here to stretch that out just a little bit. Set my piece on there, and so you have a, a concave side here for the button, and then you have a convex, look at that, uh, maybe I did pay attention to math, uh, convex side there for the snap. So I put that through there, set that bad boy on there. Bad boy, got a bad boy. That's the old rusty, crusty, Knocked over the old whiskey glass. Good gracious. <laughs> All right. Uh, so there's that. Oops. Yeah. Right. So. There you go. And that's what it essentially will look like on that side. And then with that on that side, I think I'm going to try and get this piece scalloped tonight. Why not? Why wouldn't I? Probably good reason not to, but nobody ever accused me of having good reasons, so. You know what? I need a little more whiskey. Oh, I got to put my music back on, too. I stopped it while I was checking to see what I was doing here while I was going upstairs. Okay. Little Travis trip for you. We're gonna start this playlist over again. When you get to the Travis trip part of the playlist, you know it's probably time to start her back over. Although I don't know why I'm bringing a bunch of heat against Travis trip. He didn't ever do anything to anybody. So, um, so I guess how do I want to do this? You know what I'm gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'd also like to know what I'm going to do. I guess maybe I'll draw some parallel lines here just so I can get an idea so I can kind of, I don't know. I'm just trying to get an idea of how to center this thing on there in an appropriate way. And I feel like this might be helpful. I don't know if it's going to be, I just, you know, those that might be tapering this way or tapering that way, but I'll know that when I do this. It appears as though they are slightly tapered this way. Um, I drew three lines on each side. So it appears as though if I kind of start with the, the second line in on each side. Each side will kind of taper out, but I could do it like this. I guess this is probably the best way to do it. You know, just trace around here like this. Again, I did plan on sanding these edges, even though I said that and then I proceeded to stain and bevel these edges. Again, I uh, don't know how many times I gotta say it, but if you are watching along you should watch all the way through before going back through to follow these insane person directions. So, 
so got this line here. And I'm gonna cut, cut slightly outside of that. Um, just because I am going to be sanding down these edges to get them perfect. Uh, and I might as well give myself as much room as I need. So I'm actually just gonna give myself a really nice wide berth here. Because why the heck wouldn't I? It's another lesson I've learned along the way that when it comes to seaming stuff up, you might as well just give yourself a nice wide berth. <laughs> Oh no, it's, you know what? You don't, you don't rush things. I got these uh, lines here from when I had it lined up like this against the edge of the plywood, but it's close enough where I, or soon enough after where I can just still mark them out, but just, just wait and do it the right way, I guess is the, probably the best bet. <laughs> All right, so in order to get this right, um, where the stuff over here still, um, in order to get this stuff kind of in the right spot where I want it for these purposes, I guess I could have probably, you know, in the vein of uh, frugality and saving stain, probably also could have not stained that as as heavily, but whatever. You know, at an arbitrary point, you got to draw a line on how frugal you're going to be, right? All right, so we got we got enough enough uh, spare seam, I guess would be the term I would use in this situation, um, where I can, you know, have enough room to work here. I can't see any of my uh, stained leather on the other side of my. Maybe you guys can from, from the angle you're at, but I can't in reality. And so I guess I will just take a look at it. it looks like it's pretty well, pretty well even, uh, just a little bit that way. We'll call that good. So all I'm doing here is just going ahead and getting everything lined up. I'm explaining that you can use a scrap piece of leather with the smooth side facing in to clamp up leather. Uh, it disperses the clamping power so it doesn't make imprints uh, on your leather piece when you're working on it. It's just one of those little small hints that I found useful when you're trying to lay stuff out to get it clamped together and take a look at it. And ultimately, the only thing is I want the, the face of... It's, sorry, guys, my head's going to be in the way. 30, okay, so I gotta drop this one a little. What I was doing was measuring, eyeballing the top down, and this will be easier for you guys because you are a top down view, trying to eyeball these, and it looks like this is about maybe three or four mils of a lower dip here. And I'm just trying to essentially get that squared away where it's pretty doggone close. And you know what? That eyeballing it down this way and, and and looking at it like that. I can't see what you guys can see, but um, that's a little bit better. So how are we gonna cut it is the question. We're just gonna do it. You know what? Sometimes you just gotta do it. We can always form it back after. Especially because I'm impatient and I didn't let it dry completely in between, so. Which you guys shouldn't do, because that's irresponsible. Um, unless you just want to have fun and not stress about every little decision, then you should do it exactly how I'm doing it. So all I'm doing here is just going ahead and just uh, shoring up those edges, making sure it looks nice when, it looks nice when it's put together. Because um, obviously when you have the object in there, it's going to fold a little bit different than when you're just looking at it without it. Uh, so just getting a final little fit on this, taking a look at it, pretty much. No, I don't remember what the last thing I said was, but I'm pretty sure that the last thing that I can do here, I, what I did was off camera. Um, essentially all I did was uh, trim up the 
the edge here, which I don't know, for you guys might be obvious, um, and, and strike this center line here between the two for my stitch line between them. Oh, look at that. Um, this stuff gets everywhere. I uh, apparently can't bevel the edges of wet leather, which I just found here. It just gums up. So I am going to stain this and then reform it a little bit over the night so that it kind of sets in place. And we will bevel edges and do all kinds of fun stuff when the camera picks back up. And that's fun. It's fun. It's good. It's everything's everything's kosher here. We're just going to... Do the actual last thing, and this time I actually mean it. I can't do anything else here tonight. I can't do any edges because edges are getting beveled, so I'm just gonna stain or die. No, <laughs> not die, hopefully. Uh, dye this leather here, just again, the parts you can see because. I will throw some leather conditioner on uh, I will throw some leather conditioner on the inside of these things uh, so that it is actually protected but mm, yeah, so what in one minute or two when this is a little bit less transferably stainy I am going to take my two things that I am uh, wet forming and put them over them. Let the dye be the final wet forming process. All right, guys. So I'm going to have to cut it off here. Um, we're coming grossly close to an hour on this already. Um, and I could probably go through and edit out a bunch of stuff. But, you know, my future videos will be much more edited. Uh, I haven't done a long form video like this ever before, so uh, bear with me. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, cut it off here. I'll come back. I'll have a second part two up probably tomorrow. Um, so if you're watching this anytime after uh, tonight on February 15th, you're going to be uh, going to be able to watch the other part as well. Um, pretty much all I'm explaining here is that I'm using the wet the well, all I'm doing here is I'm explaining what I'm going to do tomorrow anyway. So you'll see that in the next video. And uh, and I really do appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please do like, comment, subscribe. If you end up making this, uh, feel free to tag me on Instagram, uh, TP Leatherworks. And uh, really looking forward to any kind of feedback and uh, bringing you guys some other cool projects here in the future. I've got a couple other ideas lined up, so hopefully I'll be able to get those out here at some point uh, soon. So thanks for watching.